Hi folks, Philip Andrews here with another technique from my new book for Photoshop Element 7 called Advanced Photoshop Element 7 for Digital Photographers. And in this technique we want to look at uh, some non-destructive ways for dodging and burning your images. Most of you, if you've been working with Photoshop Elements for a while, will realize that we do have some dodge and burn tools situated with the sponge tool uh, in the toolbar or toolbox here. The burn tool in particular photographers are quite familiar with because we used to use it when we were working in the darkroom and it allows us to burn in or darken specific areas of our image. In the tools option bar we also have the ability to select specific ranges of tones that we can actually work with when we're doing this burning. One problem with working this way is that it's actually destructive. In other words, we're changing the pixels of the original image. Notice we're just working on the background layer. You can see it here in the layers palette. So when we burn in areas like this or switch to the uh, dodge tool and then lighten areas using the dodge tool, we're actually making changes to the original pixels in our image, which is called a destructive enhancement or editing change. Now, we prefer not to do that. Professionals don't make changes to their original pixels. They want to keep those original pixels in their virgin state for as long as possible. So what I'm going to do is hit Ctrl Z a couple of times to take me back to the image before I started making those changes and show you another way of burning and dodging that is actually non-destructive. So the first thing I want to do is add in an adjustment layer. So if I go to the top of the layers palette and then just go down and select levels from the adjustment layer button there. It will add in an adjustment layer. Now this levels control is exactly the same as the levels control that you will be able to access through the enhance menu except that we're adding it in as an adjustment layer. So this uh, control what we want to use it to do is to provide some extra contrast in the image itself but we're going to be able to choose where that contrast is going to be placed. So I'm concentrating on this area here of the beans and I'm adjusting the input sliders. So here the black input slider and also the mid-tone input slider in order to get some more contrast in this area. But while I'm doing that I'm going to hold down the Alt or Opt key just to ensure that I'm not clipping any shadow detail as I work with that area. Now notice that there's other areas of the image that I'm actually clipping you see the preview here, the areas that are converted to pure black against the white background, I'm actually losing detail in those areas. But in the area of the beans themselves, I'm not losing detail. Uh, there's no clipping happening there at all. So I'm just adding contrast to that particular area. So I'm going to click OK and you'll say, but Philip, we've applied those changes to all of the image, not just the area that you were talking about. You're right. And notice that with the adjustment layer, we actually have a mask associated with the adjustment control, that levels control. And it's using this mask that we can actually control where these changes are made. And this is the key to a non-destructive approach. So I'm going to select the mask itself and then go up to edit and down to fill. And it will fill the layer. I'm going to, I'm going to choose black. Uh, to fill the layer. Notice it's white at the moment and the effect is being applied to the whole of the image. Watch what happens to the preview when I click OK and fill the mask with black. The levels effect is removed from the um, picture that you see. Now the levels control is still there but because the whole of the mask is filled with black we've hidden the effect that it was having on that picture. So now that gives us the opportunity to go and grab the brush tool, make sure that the white, white is selected as our foreground color and that the mask is selected in the layers palette. Once we've done that, we can then go in and paint on the effects of the mask just in the area that we're working with. So in this case, we want to paint on the effects of the mask just over the beans, just over the parts of the image that we wanted to make the changes in contrast to. So we want this area to be, I guess, our focal point. So that's why we're making the changes here. So you can see the change in that part of the picture. We've got more contrast in that area of the picture. Now what about if we want to darken up the areas around that set of beans? Well, let's add in another levels adjustment layer. This time I'm going to drag down the white output option, which will actually darken our highlight areas. I'm also going to drag the middle input option 
up towards or over towards the right hand side which will darken down that area as well. So I'm actually trying to concentrate on around the beans so the area around the beans not the beans themselves because we're going to remove this effect from this area and just keep it in the area around the beans. So I'm going to click OK and notice that the effect is being fully applied because the mask is white. If we then go back, make sure that our brush is still selected and flick the foreground colour so that it's now black, so I just switched foreground and background so the foreground colour is now black, we can start painting in black in the foreground area, or into the mask rather, which will reveal that part of the image that we were working with before. So it removes it from the changes that, that we were making with that um, with that second level adjustment layer. So notice now, if you look at the masked area, we have a black area in the center, so that area is not being changed using this levels adjustment. And we have a white area in the center of this one, so only that area is being changed using this adjustment. Now, because this is totally non-destructive, if I then turn off these controls, you will see the original image I can then selectively place those controls back on again and you'll see our adjusted dodged and burn image that has been adjusted and changed using non-destructive techniques. A sophisticated technique that will actually provide really good control for your images and get you working the way the professionals do.